That's good. Excellent. We're good. Okay. We're good. Let me wet my whistle here. You know what would have been helpful, guys? If I could read the chat. <laughs> I don't have a spare phone anymore, so I can't see anything. But uh, we will make do. Ashley is going to be here. Matthew should be here. Uh, Matthew is the auctioneer, but since you guys can't see him or hear him, uh, I will be doing the gaveling, okay? So, uh, welcome to the first uh, Dead Goat Auction here on my channel. Of course, if you follow my brother, he's got lots of auctions already under his belt uh, with the help of the Dead Goat Auction Yard. For some reason, it's always hard to drink out of these tumblers. Not hard, but like it, there's like a vacuum or something. And you have to like force it into your... Anyway, is the sound good? Can you hear me good? I got this mic. Sometimes it's like the opposite of better hearing. So let me know. Um, do you mind giving me maybe that tablet so I can see the comments? Yeah. If you don't mind. Um, and we'll wait for Matthew to enter the room. If he's, if he, he should be here. I just spoke to him. Uh, we went over some last minute things. Uh, he has a lot of experience doing this, not just for my brother, uh, but he, he actually does this for other folks as well. He offered to do it here and I really appreciate him helping us out. So if you want to know how this, this auction is going to work, <laughs> I forgot to glue this back on. Uh, if you want to know how this auction is going to work, it's basically uh, we have all the rules in the in the in the description, so you can check that out. But I'm going to try to explain it uh, as best as I can. We're going to bring up something, right? Say it's this airplane. The bids start at one dollar, and we have about a five minute window of bidding per item. I will talk about the items whilst excuse me, whilst you guys bid in $1 increments, uh, so all the bids start at $1, and then they go from there, and if nothing goes over a dollar, then Matthew there we go. Here. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Matthew, for being here. I believe this can fold up into a... No, it doesn't. I don't know. Um, anyway... Matthew is going to be keeping track of the bids and everything, maybe it does. Yeah, there we go. Everything is, is being kept track on his screen. So to make everything fair, he's third party. Anything at the last bid or the closing bid or whatever you want to call it, the high bid, is going to be determined by Matthew and he will say it on the screen once the time has expired. Uh, the reason why we're doing it with him and him only is because that's the fairest way we can make it because if you're lagging or something like that or if I'm lagging or something like that, it's just, it'll just be one person decides and it'll be Matthew and he's, he's, you know, he's neutral. He doesn't care who wins. I honestly don't care who wins either. Uh, I just appreciate everyone being here. So Matthew's going to be keeping track, and all, track of all that time, bids, and and wins, okay? And uh, uh, when you win, please, how do you say that? Like only bid if you actually want it. Don't, don't, don't be like trying to up the bid. I know that like, that's fun to do and maybe you think you're helping me, but if you don't actually want it, don't bid on the thing. And uh, that'll just be easier for everyone, uh, I think, because if you win, you don't actually want it. Well, I don't know that you don't actually want it. And then you decide you don't want it later. That's kind of a bummer. Um, if you do win, you're going to email me, order from Josh at gmail.com. Say that you won the item. Do you guys hear our dryer? Oh, washing machine? It's going into orbit. 
if you do if you do win, you're gonna email. They probably can't hear you. Uh, Ashley's gonna be on the email machine, getting uh, uh, you situated with shipping costs and all that. Two questions: What are the payment methods, and will you sign the items? The payment methods are anything you would use to pay for anything that you would buy from me. So PayPal, PayPal credit, card, credit card, debit, Google Pay, Apple Pay. Apple Pay. E-transfer if you're in Canada. Basically, any way that you can pay. There's probably some that we can't do. But if you're not sure about a method, like there is a, a method that should work. And will I sign them? Sure. I could sign them. Some of them are already signed, actually. Um, but anyway, if you guys are ready, uh, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to hold up the item. That's going to be the, the item of note. Good luck, everyone. It says Matthew. Matthew, he, he's spending money to give everyone a a well wish here. Um, all, item, are all items that you posted in this. Okay, so all the items that I have here are all the ones that I decided that will will work for the for the auction. So on the Instagram, you may have seen it may have differ from what we're gonna have here, but that's just because of un, unforeseen circumstances. But we have most of the items here, so. We're good there. All right. I should have brought a thing to smack this onto. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hold up the item and that's when the time starts. Well, the time starts when Matthew says, says go, whatever. And he's gonna have a timer of say, between three and five minutes. Again, we have all the rules and stuff in the, in the description. So for example, Actually, not for example, for we're starting now, so this video doesn't go on for hours. We're starting now. This is the airplane. Once Matthew, once you see Matthew's thing says go or whatever he's gonna say, then we're gonna go. And then when he says stop, we're gonna stop. So start the bid at one dollar for this airplane. This lived on my first shop ceiling for a few years, two years, three years, and then uh, lived on this shop ceiling for another two years or so. How long have I been in that shop? Three years? How long have we lived here? Four, four years now. We moved, in we moved in in 2019? And then we didn't have it for a whole year. So three years-ish. Three years we had this uh, up on the shop uh, ceiling. It's basically uh, made out of a fur dowel, uh, not dowel, um, baluster uh, for the fuselage. Uh, the wings are a couple pieces of two by four cutoffs of some sort. Like I just, I had just, I think I actually remember I specifically keeping these for an airplane and then went home and made it, I think, but I can't remember exactly. The, the tail fins or whatever you call those are uh, from, uh, they come with canvases and stuff. Can you show a little Yeah, sorry, I'm not, I'm very far away because this table is like three and a half feet across. Uh, the, the wheels are two screws, the propeller is a piece of metal, and uh, it's a, there's two, you can't really see, there's two holes for your, for your pilot and co-pilot. Um, and then the back wheel, of course, is another screw. Um, we had this for, uh, or we didn't have this, but I made another one, a bigger one that was inspired by this, uh, recently that we gave to someone who lives in Germany. Um, but that one was made entirely out of wood. Um, and it was bigger than this. How much time do we have here? Oh, we're already at $26. I hear twenty seconds. Swing fast. We have a minute forty left. We have a minute forty left. Apparently, uh, thank you, Matthew, for keeping track of that. A minute forty. So this can go for twenty six dollars to who was that? Yes. Missy. Missy. Um, I don't really know what else to tell you about this. Figure your auctioneering. My auctioneering voice. Now, if Matthew was here, you would hear him doing it, and he'd be like. If you guys watch his uh, Insta Instagram, uh, uh, whatever you call them, 
vid live videos, you, you would get, you can get his voice, and he would be like, "We hear twenty six. We hear twenty seven. We got twenty six, twenty six. I can't do it. I don't understand how they do that. Like sometimes there's auctions uh, at fairs and stuff here, and uh, one time in particular, I remember this little kid who was like eight was doing it. He didn't know what the prices should be, so like you'd see like someone else being like started at $20. And then the kid would be like, ah, blah, 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 $20. And he'd be pointing, he'd be like, do I see here $20 from the lady in the whatever? And he would just like, I don't know if that's called flirting or not, but whatever it was, but he was just trying to get people to like the, the ladies interested in certain things. And then when it was like a more manly thing or masculine thing, then he'd be like, he, he would talk to be like the man with the mustache. Blah, 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 blah. Um, just a reminder to Americans, your dollar is worth a dollar thirty Canadian. Yes, that's true. Okay, we got one minute. One minute left on the aeroplane. You could hang this from your shop ceiling. Whoever gets this, please hang this from your ceiling. Winner. Oh, we got a winner. Sold for $26 to Missy. Missy, please email me. Order from Josh at gmail.com. When you receive this, I hope it survives the mail. I hope everything here survives the mail. If it doesn't, I'll refund you your, your money, uh, but uh, hang this from your ceiling fan or something. So when you turn it on, it just goes, <laughs> I think that would be funny. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's probably going to be difficult. Yeah. Maybe we should do, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? We will move everything closer to me so that I can move the camera closer. How about that, guys? <laughs> okay, I think that's as close as I can get the camera while still seeing everything in frame. I can hold everything. I think we're good. I think we're good here. Okay. Okay, first thing sold. Thank you to uh, Missy, and thank you to everyone else who uh, was in that. What should I, should, what should I do next? I was, yeah, I said the shipping. Yeah, so shipping is extra. I don't know what, I, I said that this morning anyway. Maybe I didn't say that. Yeah, okay, to be clear, again, we have the, the, the rules and guidelines and stuff in the description, but shipping is extra to wherever you are. It, it's dependent on where you live. I don't know. Everything here is different and, yeah, it'll be in Canadian dollars. Um. Okay, next. Okay, let's do this one because it's right in front of my face. All right, when Matthew says go, that's when the bidding will start on this wire whale. So this is a whale that I made probably after our first visit to the island that Ashley and I had together. Maybe the second visit, I'm not sure. Uh, but I took some driftwood from the beach, uh, which apparently is illegal if you do it in a park, but... Uh, Oh, well. Uh, so if you want some contraband, here we go. Um, Jacqueline Marie says, Canadian dollars. One dollar start. Five minutes bid. Go. Perfect. Uh, so this, yeah, again, everything starts at one dollar. So if you're going way up there, uh, thank you. But anyway, so we got, uh, we got, I don't know how many feet of wire this is. I can't remember, but uh, probably a hundred feet of wire or something like that, uh, that I twirled into the shape of a, my favorite whale is, is a humpback whale. And so I would have modeled this roughly off of a humpback whale. Of course, I mean, it's, it's kind of shapeless. It just has a generic shape, but uh, yeah, humpback whale on a piece of driftwood. Uh, I made a bunch of these because I, I sold these in a gallery that stole from me. <laughs> Remember that guy? What was yeah. his name? Yeah. I guess we don't have to say his name. Protect the guilty. No, screw that. His name was Chris. I actually don't remember his name. I think it was Chris. Wanted to give me a massage, freaking weirdo. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, made these while we were camping, some of them. And then also while I was working there uh, separately, I also made uh, quite a few. 
Um, and I can't remember what I what kind of price tags I put on these, but they took me, you know, maybe an hour or so How to make. Feet of wire? I think it's a hundred feet of wire because this would have been one bale of wire, I think. Uh, but yeah, I haven't made one of these in a long time, and likely I will make more in the future at some point. Do you know where my wire skull is? Did I sell that? I think you did that in our office. Yeah, maybe. I made a skull, like a human skull. Or is it in that cabinet in the studio? I don't think so. Because I would have it out. I think I would display it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the skull. I'll probably make another skull. It was uh, it was uh, one of the things I did on my, on my downtime when I was working on the island there. Um, how much time do we got left? $65? Are you kidding me? $70? Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's more than I thought uh, would, this would go for. I appreciate that. Um, I don't really know what else to say about this. I, I feel like it will survive shipping, no problem. Josh, give an idea what each would cost. Well, the airplane, $10 probably. How much did it go for? 25 26 there we go. So you're, you're overbidding. I don't know how much I would sell that for. Probably more than $10, actually, because I would, uh, it would it'd take longer than $10 worth of work. Maybe I would sell it for $25. This I'd probably sell for, say, like $100 or something like that. Um, but don't let that stop you from going way over that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I forget what I sold these for at the time. But I would just make a whole bunch of them all at once, put them in uh, the gallery there. I never got paid for any of them. So, no, <laughs> but he sold them or he just took them. Yeah. He probably sold them by now. Uh, apparently that guy was shady and a lot of people do not like him. I was unaware. He seemed like a nice guy to me. Very eclectic dude. Um, but anyway, there we go. Um, by the way, this is the itchiest driftwood to sand. Like it's fine now, like it won't make you itchy now because it's like, it's kind of sealed up. But like when I was sanding this just to get like the slivery parts off, oh man, it made my hands so itchy. Uh, but again, it should be fine now. Where was this? We pulled this out of a box. Cause this is one that we just had displayed. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're at ninety dollars. Ninety dollars. A little bit, a little bit, ninety dollars. A little bit, a little bit, ninety-one. A little bit, ninety-one. A little bit, ninety-two. Now we got ninety-two. Do I hear ninety-three? Blah 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 blah. <laughs> we got one minute left. Dang, this seems long. I feel like we should shorten it, but that's okay. We can do five minutes. Yeah, because the rules we have it between three and five minutes. Matthew, if you feel like it, let's go down to four minutes for the next item, uh, if that sounds good to you. Because uh, I run out of things to talk about, about the things. Uh, I want something to do a uh, Austin Powers bid. One million dollars! Right. What's an Austin Powers bid? I don't even remember. Did they auction off stuff? I don't even remember. Uh, Mary Beth, $125. Holy cow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 125, 126. <laughs> what? Someone said 150. <laughs> well, what if I start making these again and people are buying them for like $93? Now I, now I know what they're worth. At least $150. Thank you, Matthew. He says the high bid is $150. $150 going, going once. I don't know how much time there's left. It's over? It's over? Yeah. Oh, it's over. Sold to Mary Beth for 150 bones. Thank you. Final look at this before I go put it behind me. Thank you very much, Mary Beth. Guys, this fountain here, it looks like it's in a stone Whoop. and hand hammered copper, but it's plastic with some real rocks. Very disappointing. Got this in the Santa game. 
I thought it was so cool until I saw that it was fake. That's one thing when you buy something from me, it'll be hand crafted goodness. What? Oh, it's getting wet. It's a whale. It's, you should be used to it. Come on. Oh, we got it. We got it. There we go. There we go. Okay. Next item. Since we were talking about skulls, why don't we do this skull? Matthew, go ahead. Maybe put in the stipulation how much time we're going to spend on this thing. Uh, and once the, he says go, then we can start it at $1. So this thing... I made like three or four of these. This one is the worst one. Uh, probably my first one, just being honest here. It is still cool. At least to me, it's cool. This is made out of stacked OSB. If you don't know what OSB is, that's the, like the sheathing, people call it chipboard, uh, that you see like houses being sheathed in, uh, at least where we live. So we build our houses out of wood most of the time. Uh, it's just a better insulating factor than, say, like a brick house or something like that uh, for our Canadian winters. So lots of houses you'll see OSB. Sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's blue, but most of the times it's just wood color. Uh, pink and blue and green and all that, that's usually, it's it's uh, like a fire guard that's put on it. Um because houses are built so close together nowadays, so it's just like if this house is burning down, it there's like a fire break on the walls that are closest to other walls of other houses. But anyway, most people know what OSB is. This is made out of stacked OSB and, uh, and then carved with a, like a circular saw, uh, some spade bits, uh, sanding tools and things like that. Uh, he's got like when he was a baby, he was left on his, like this all the time, actually on something that was slightly lumpy. So his skull has one of these things that I always see like Tibetan monks have. I don't know what the heck that is, but Tibetan monks, they, they, they see, they're bald. yeah, they're always bald, but they have like this shape of head. That's not what I was going for here. And I'm sure there's plenty of Tibetan monks that don't have a head shape like this. I just, I've seen that uh, a few times. Um, anyway, this is, uh, I think I did this one. I painted just to look antique, -y, but I did another one where I, I made it all out of OSB and then I made another one out of clay and then I made another one out of the wire and then another one out of steel. And then this was just another one that I made. In fact, actually this one here, it used to have horns on it. This, oh, right. This one actually was in Alex's store. He asked me to make this for him for these buffalo horns that he had that were broken. And he's like, can you just make me a skull? That's what the heck this was. And then he gave it back to me uh, years later. What? So he put horns on it? Yeah, so there was horns here. Yeah. So it would look like a devil, I guess. That's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he asked. So I, I probably already made this, but I told him I already had a skull that he could put them on. I think. I can't remember exactly. Um, but anyway, here it is. Uh, it has a, for his spinal, whatever, his spinal column, whatever, his brain connecting stem can go up there. Cervical spine? Wait, isn't the cervix down below? Oh, cervix and cervical. Cervical and cervix sound like they should go together. I don't know. One minute left. What are we at? 35. We're at $35. $35. Do I hear 36? 36. 36 in the back. But put up your sign. <laughs> oh, we got 36. Do I hear 37? Oh, I see 40. Except for if you hear me saying that, I shouldn't say this. Matthew's the one who's supposed to keep track of that. Sorry. My bad. I just... I don't know how to do uh, auctioneer voice. I, uh, not voice. Huh? Did you paint it? Yeah, I did paint it. I painted it, and it and he's 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 antiqued a bit. Uh, this is not that old. This is like five years old. Uh, Winner. But it looks. Jim Jackson. 
Jim sold to Jim. Shit, I broke that again. Jim for I can't yeah. see for forty one dollars. Thank you, Jim. Jim, please email me order from Josh at gmail.com. Tell me that you won the skull, and then we will figure out shipping. So also, if you win, please tell us your your mailing address, your full mailing address, not just the zip code or whatever, like the whole entire thing, because the way that Ashley does it, you need the whole address to, to make it work. And if you're outside of Canada, also please your, your phone number because uh, that's just for customs. Uh, we can't send it out without a phone number if it's certain things, if it's not a letter or something like that. I don't know. Okay, this next thing. Slightly damaged. Toenail. What? <laughs> it came off the toe, so... I have to glue it back on, but half his toenail is still there. It'll look normal when I, when I glue it back on. I hope this survives the mail. I had a lot of hate on this video. <laughs> People were so excited to hear what happened to my truck when I came home. Uh, $1, start three minute time limit, go, says Matthew. Okay, started at, uh, started at $1. So this, instead of putting out videos about my truck being seized at the border, people were wondering, and I wasn't answering those questions, I made this toe, and I made this tooth, which we will auction off next, and I put those videos out, and people were like, what the heck, that's disgusting, and uh, uh, what I was trying to do, and I've never said this before, is the next three items here, they kind of go together, I, I bookmarked my trip to the U.S. with uh, much-hated items slash hated videos. <laughs> um, but anyway, the toe, I just, I don't know. You hear like big toe stuff, right? So I made a big toe and it's disgusting. And that's the whole thing. This is just something that you put on your desk. It, it, people will ask you, like I even put like some skin texture on there. I don't know how well you can see that. His toe is even bruised because he stubbed it. I don't know if you can see the blue in there. Didn't break his nail, although it's broken now. Um, his toenail is gross. Inspired by Jim Carrey in uh, as a uh, Count Olaf in Lemony Snicket in the series of unfortunate events, where he says, "Clip my thick yellow toenails." Yeah, that's why I made this thick and yellow. Uh, I do not expect this to go over the dollar. What do we have it at? We have one dollar high. <laughs> um, and of course, hey, you're not going to hurt my feelings if no one wants this. I don't care. I would keep this. This was on the Just Josh and Dakota set for a long time because it's hilarious. Oh, we're at two dollars now. Uh, thanks to Martha. Oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to say this stuff. But there we go. Matthew says two dollars. It would help to put stop in the chat, then people can see if they're too late. Uh, well, they'll be able to see if they're too late when we have the high bid announced, right? Or what? Matthew will say it. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Um, when, the, when he says time's up, oh, we're at $3 now to Zenobi. Do I hear four? If this actually goes to Zenobi, that'll be super easy because then it won't we won't break the toe in shipping. And she's actually going to be coming over here right away because we're going to do a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a shop talk with Hans. Um, I imagine she would be coming. Um, so this is uh, one of my favorite sculptures I've ever made. Just so you know, because I think it's, I don't know, I will make more. In fact, I actually made one before this, but I put nail polish on the nail. It was purple. It looked like this, but it was a little smaller. My friend, uh, he put serious camber on his, on his back wheels of his car and which created what's known as tow. And it made both of his tires go flat prematurely. There's a way to do your camber so that that doesn't happen. Uh, so quickly, but yeah. So then I made him one to hang on the, his tow hook, a tow on his tow hook. Because uh, he got a sticker that said tow is bad or something like that. Anyway. Pennies in the dog bed? Pennies in the dog bed? That's funny. Uh, oh, we're done. 
Gigi is the winner for $10. Sold. Thank you, Gigi. Email me, orderfromjosh at gmail.com. Tell me your mailing address and we will send this out to you. Again, I'm hoping this survives shipping. I'm going to do my best to pack everything nicely so it gets to you. Uh, this obviously needs some, some small repair, but that's not a big deal. I'm not even sure how it broke. It was in a box, so that's probably how it broke. Yeah, and if, if it doesn't make it, then I will, uh, I will refund you. Imagine how to refund everything. <laughs> that would suck. Next item is this rotten tooth, this pulled tooth from a giant. This was another video that people hated because it was gross. I don't know. For some reason, they felt like they needed to finish watching the video and complain, but doesn't bother me none because I love this sculpture as well. I've made several uh, rotten teeth. The, the latest one that I made, I actually made for Patreon members, and it was much bigger than this. Uh, I should actually share the pictures of that on Instagram. Maybe I'll post that here right away. Um, uh, when Matthew says go, this is what we will... Oh, he already did say go? Okay. And we'll start at $1 and go up from there. This tooth, made out of air-dry clay, as is the, as is the toe... Um, I made it to have a cavity, which by the way, guys, I got my first cavity, went to the dentist and they're like, oh, you have a cavity. I'm like, what, where? And uh, you can't see it, it's, it's under, it's right here. No, it's over here. It's on one side, can't see it. First cavity in my life, disappointing. Um, but this thing, this sucker, was pulled from uh, a troll, 0M, lives under the bridge that we haven't built yet, across the pond. Uh, <laughs> I actually want to do a project where I have a box full of these that has like a, you know, use your imagination. A lot of the things that I make, it's like they're meant to like get your imagination running a little bit. Um, but I want to have these because they, they don't look real, but they don't not look real at the same time. Like this could pass on screen as like a real tooth in real life. You can tell that it's not because, you know, the texture is wrong and stuff. But um, I want to make a box where I have several teeth as if like, you know how like they have like the ivory trade. And so people are poaching uh, like elephants and rhinos and, and such. Well, I thought it would be fun to have the troll tooth trade where they pull teeth from sleeping giants and then they sell the teeth for their ivory enamel whatever so i have a box where it's like a you know black market guy like puts you know who sells like the watches but he'd have a suitcase of, of troll teeth i don't know i may still do that at some point but i haven't yet we're at 30 dollars. holy crap wow Okay, I was not expecting that. I thought this would be uh, there with the tooth. Um, yeah, so look forward to more projects involving uh, rotting teeth. <laughs> That's a weird thing. We got one minute remaining. Thank you, Matthew. Um, yeah, I don't know how much time we started with, but again... It, it seems like too long. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this. <sighs> That's a cool idea, says Heather. Thank you. Can you do the gold pan next, please? No. I'm going to do the raptor claw to finish my thoughts from earlier. Then maybe I will do the gold. It's actually not a gold pan, but it, it's from a gold mine. So I know what you're saying. It is three minutes. Are we next? I mean, are we next? <laughs> are we next? Are we done? No. Oh, he's saying it's three minutes because I asked how much time we have on this. Okay. Uh, I want your plants. Oh, okay. Those are actually Ashley's plants, but I don't think she's going to let you have them. <laughs> Tammy's the winner for $31. Sold to Tammy for $31. Thank you, Tammy. Please email me. Order from Josh at gmail.com with your mailing address and your phone number if you're outside of Canada, how you'd like to pay, all that jazz, and we will get that sent out to you. 
Let's move on to the next item. It is this raptor claw. So, huh? Most hated. The most hated video. My most disliked video I've ever had. More disliked than my countertop video, which is also my most viewed. My most viewed, it's like 550,000 views or something like that. That might, might be less than that, but it has a lot of views on it. Lots of thumbs down for people who hated the aesthetic, but the positivity is more. But the ratio with this, people who were, let's call them fans of me, did not hold back their, their derision. Is that the right word to use? Their absolute dis wonderment. That's not a word, but like they were just so not. This video, I've told you guys that there are Easter eggs in my videos. And if you go to that video where I make this, that is part of that Easter egg background made up fictional story that goes along with other things that you might see in the vlogs. It's meant for fun, but anyway, that is one of them. So, uh, I left to LA from home here with having this video put out. And then I came home and made the tooth and the toe. So I like sandwiched my adventure. Anyways, this is a raptor claw fossil air dry clay. It's, it's obviously not a real raptor claw. If it was, I definitely would sell it like this. I wouldn't sell it actually. Um, I am actually really pleased with the sculpture. I think it looks very, very authentic. Uh, of course, it always looks better on screen because again, it's prop. But from the raptor claws that I've seen in real life, which would just be in museums, this this looks like I could put this there. Um, I think it's awesome. We should forge one like that, Josh. Yeah, that would be cool. Like, I love the... Is this dying? Yeah, it's dead. That's weird. Oh, well. I can still see your guys' comments here, so it's fine. Um, I forget what I was saying. But look at the cracks and stuff in there. By the way, I, like, bit this to... Uh, I don't know. I wanted it to crumble a certain way, and spitting out the clay, the dry clay, was so hard because it was like paste. It was just like <laughs> that wasn't good. Um, but anyway, I love this uh, this raptor claw. Now, normally, I don't make anything that I don't like that I don't find interesting. So I will probably say that I like everything here. Uh, but this is one of my favorite sculptures I think I've ever done with the air dry clay, which is not a good, it's not a good uh, material to work with. Winner, winner, we got a winner. Grandma is the winner at $45. Sold to grandma. Thank you, grandma. Uh, appreciate you. I hope this survives the trek to wherever you live. Please email me, orderfromjosh at gmail.com with your mailing info and your phone number if you're outside of Canada. Um, okay, next, I said I would do this. This is what they said was the gold pan. Now this is not a gold pan, this is a gold plate. When Matthew says go, we will start the bidding at $1. This here, I made a live video of, of making like this shadow box frame thing for it. Basically, it is a plate that is made out of steel. As you can tell, it's rusted and stuff. That was magnet fished out of, I think the lake. Hold on, actually, I might have it here. Porter Landing. Uh, okay, it doesn't say if it was in the lake or the river or what. I can't remember. But my brother Dakota and my brother Ken went magnet fishing while they were down there doing some... The, my older brothers, they have a mining, gold mining operation and... Uh, they needed to move some equipment and stuff, so Dakota went with them, and they did they did some moving moving of stuff, and then they also did some hand panning and magnet fishing and what have you. And they brought home some uh, wood and this and some other things. And I thought it would be cool to frame it, so I did that for a live video one day. 
Uh, the live video is still up, so you can watch it. You can see me try to figure out how to use a typewriter. Uh, in the end, we didn't actually use the typewriter. So I just printed it off the computer in typewrite font, but it's, uh, it has the information. It says, Gold Miner's Dinner Plate, uh, Porter Landing, British Columbia, 1873 to 1930. That is, I forget what those years are. I don't know if that was like the, how long the town was there or what. And then it says that it was found in 2022. So that's when my, my brother's brothers found it. And then it has a poem here written by Paul, who is a viewer. Thank you, Paul. It says, once a miner at the diner found that he was running late, that old timer of a miner left behind his dinner plate, which is a great poem. I wanted to include that because I thought it was uh, really fun. Um, so the frame here is also from the gold mine. So it's 200 to 250 years old, depending on where it was mined or about 250 years old, 1873. How many years ago was that? So something like that. So this is something that I was not sure if I would ever sell or do what, but I wouldn't necessarily hang it anywhere. Like maybe I'd hang it on a small wall and it would be like, oh, what is this? But I don't know, we just didn't find a place for it. And so it just kind of was sitting on the shelf yeah. with, all the, with all the cutting boards and stuff. And so I was like, yeah, should we put this in there? Now, I, I like it a lot. So I would totally keep this if no one wanted it, but I thought it would be good to put in here because I think this is one of the, the good items, shall we say, because it has a cool back story and history. Oh yeah, I did sign the back. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, it's pretty cool. Again, gold mine uh, used wood a gold miner's actual dinner plate, probably his only dish that he had, and then he lost it. He was probably bummed. Um, and, then, uh, and then the poem by Paul. Yeah, it's a great piece. We're at $200 to Missy. Wow, thank you very much. <laughs> That's probably uh, what I would uh, start the value of this at, so I appreciate that. I think... Uh, I think the history on this is like it's clearly a broken plate, so it, the, you wouldn't sell this necessarily. Oh, we have a winner! Missy is the winner. Sold for two hundred dollars. Shoot. Um, so, like, I think that this is worth around two hundred bucks. I might even try to sell it for more, and then get two hundred bucks out of it or whatever, just because it's so cool. Great wood, great plate. Great conversation. Um, and you know it's true because, well, I guess you still have to take my word for it, but it's not like something that you find in an antique store or whatever where it's just like, huh, I wonder, like, cause people make stuff up all the time. I wouldn't do that. Of course, you have to take my word for it that I wouldn't do that, but my brothers wouldn't do that to me. They wouldn't be like, hey, we found this in this interesting spot, but they didn't actually. That. We're not going to be able to fit everything on this anyway. Let's take away the hair. Okay. I'm just going to put this on the floor for now. Okay. Shall we move on? Next we have... I'm going to move this tablet since it's... Oh, wait. It's not dead. It's Yeah, but I tried to wake it up. Oh, no. The battery's full. Why is the brightness down? Do you know how to turn it up? Uh, no, I don't. If you swipe down and go to settings, are you put on your phone? Okay, it's not much brighter, but that's okay. Okay, next on uh, on our list is remember this egg. We are going to give away. No, we're not going to give it away. We're going to auction off this egg. We'll start the bidding at one dollar when. Uh, uh, Matthew says go. So this egg I made because uh, Robin, shoot, I hope your name is Robin. 
the sword fighting guy, he made me an egg. Uh, he turned it on his lathe. And so it's like, you know, like a like an egg shelled egg, right? He made me that, sent it to me, and I put it on the shelf. And then I was like, you know what? Every time I see eggs, wooden eggs, they're always, you know, they're always egg shaped. Like, you know what I mean? Like the whole egg. I was like, I think it would be funny to do a cracked egg or like, you know, like a fried egg or whatever. So that's why I made this. And I will probably make more of these just because I think they're fantastic. Um, this one is made out of maple and cherry. Cherry is the yolk and then the, the white is, is maple. And uh, yeah, just a fun little piece here. This is, uh... guys, I take this medication that gives me the worst cotton mouth and it's way worse now that I'm talking a lot. So that's why I keep drinking. Um, this is one of my favorite wood sculptures I've made. It's super simple, but like, it's just, it's so fun. Like I've wanted to do a painting of an egg for a long time and don't steal my idea. Maybe someone already did it. I want to do a painting of an egg, but the yolk is like graffiti all over it. So instead of just being yellow, it'd be like, you know, spray painted all these, you know, different things. And then the, the, the egg white part would just be normal. Uh, I think that would be fun. But anyways, that's, uh, that's something for another day. I've ran out of stuff to do in here. I don't know what the time was on here, but yeah, so it's made out of why? Like I'm, we're clearly watching something here. Why does this do this? Like, it doesn't say it's dead. No, it's See that? Full battery? Yeah, it says full battery. I'm just gonna keep this playing then. Oh, maybe that's why it's showing off. It's like wearing a plate. Yeah, so this is maple and cherry wood. Just little scraps. I feel like, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, one thing I should say earlier, I said, I think we would finish the, uh, the cutting boards today. I don't know why I said that. I obviously still needed to glue some up. So next Monday we'll start selling the, uh, the cutting, right? Will that work? Yeah. Okay. Next Monday, we're going to start selling the cutting board. So if you're on the list, good. If you're not on the list and you want to be on the list, we're not going to, you're going to have to wait till next batch, which won't be for a long time. Probably. So if you want to be on the, if you want to get a cutting board from us, uh, now is the time to uh, get on the list, which you can do. So winner. order from Josh at gmail.com. We got a winner. Martha. Martha sold to Martha for $38. Thank you, Martha. This will survive. No problem getting to you. Appreciate that. Order from Josh at gmail.com. Send us your mailing info. Okay, what should I do next? Jellyfish? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, next. Next, we'll do the jellyfish. Starting the bids at $1 once Matthew says go. Um, this thing, okay, is one of my first ones. So, I will tell you the flaws here right away. The top there, I wasn't very good at welding. I'm still not. Is that one of the first things you ever wanted? Mm, I don't remember. It would be one of the first-ish things that I welded. Um, but this is what I don't like about it. But the rest of it is actually pretty cool. This thing is just a uh, bunch of, like, scrap wood. Um, scrap wood? Scrap metal. <laughs> uh, kind of turned into a jellyfish shape on some whatever this sea life is called. So we got some nails here for some plant life. Uh, we got some barnacly things made out of some nuts and we got some like seaweed here made out of some steel. I actually remember specifically not throwing this out. People always tell me, why do you have this? Well, because I might make a jellyfish and I need some seaweed in there. 
And then the tentacle-y things are made out of, I don't know if you can tell, but th that's coat hangers. And then the top here is just a piece of probably siding, I want to say. Um, yeah, pretty cool. We are at $55, $55 by here, 56, 56, 56, 56. Ah, there's, we're at now at 50, now we're at 57, $57. Huh? Do you remember what the base is? Oh, the base is just, uh, it's a piece of, uh, base is just a, a piece of uh, steel that it doesn't, this is just, wait, is that? I don't know why it has those dots there. It didn't used to. This must have been set on something that was slightly sticky. Uh, I don't remember the base, but I do remember being like, oh, this will work perfect. I just pulled it out of my scrap bin. My scrap bin used to be a lot smaller because less people knew that I did this stuff. And uh, so less people gave me stuff to use in art. But uh, yeah. Uh, now that we have the shop up and running, remember how like for a while we didn't, I wasn't making as much stuff. Uh, I used to make stuff every day. Of course, now with my health, with my brain thing and stuff, it, you know, it's, it still will be a while before I can make s stuff again. But I love being able to go into the shop, grab something here, grab something there, go in the art truck, grab something here, something there, and then just making it, not having to be like, Hmm, I wish I had whatever. I already have something that will work for a lot of these types of sculptures. Now, also on the commission list, I'm always, I have like a hundred things in my mind that I'm always like keeping an eye out. I'm like, oh, I know I have to make an eagle. I found the perfect beak for it. Now I don't know where it is. I think my grandfather must have cleaned it up. Cause he's like, he, he told me, he's like, why do you have like things just stuck in like little nooks and crannies? I'm like, oh, so I'll remember where it is. And the other day I was looking for the beak cause I was trying to show people like, oh, I know where certain things are, even though it looks like it's a huge mess and it's gone. So that's a bummer. But anyway, someone had commissioned uh, uh, an eagle. And so I had a perfect thing for a beak and I want to. I want to make some more. So we got a winner. Okay, winner is $59 sold to Smurf. Thank you, Smurf. Uh, appreciate you. Also, I need to talk to you about something. So this will be a perfect excuse. Um, anyways, point is, is, I can't wait to be able to get back to things. No, I look forward to it. Didn't I say I was going to stop saying I can't wait? Um. I am excited to get back to things because, yeah. But anyway, if you're on the commission list for like sculptural stuff, I didn't forget about you. We, we, we have you written down. Some things I know if you're sick of waiting or you stop following me or whatever, that's fine. You're never going to hurt my feelings by not being able to do things. Okay. Since that thing had some coat hanger stuff, we'll do this coat hanger thing next. This is a heart. Valentine's is coming up. If you have a lover or a romantic. It's like next week, so. It's next week? Yeah. Next Wednesday or Tuesday. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully this gets expedited out to you quickly. Uh, bidding will start at $1 once Matthew says go. And uh, yeah, it's not much to say about this. It's just a tangled heart. I made these all the time. I usually made them out of copper wire, which is way easier to bend than this stuff, just so you know. Uh, I would take the scrap wire from job sites because, you know, I did uh, drywall and taping and stuff. And I don't know if you know this, but it, it's like almost a joke that like it's... I don't want to generalize just in case there's people here who are electricians, but electricians are notorious for leaving their scraps all over the floor. Sometimes, if they're a nice electrician, they'll put them all in a box, but they hardly ever take it with them. But I would strip the wire and then I would make hearts like this. Uh, this is obviously not copper. This is, what are, what are coat hangers? Are they steel? I think they might be a cheap steel, mild steel. Um, but anyways, this is made out of coat hangers. You can even see like the, the braided part. You see that right there? 
uh, turn into a heart. Uh, we actually had this on our wall in our old place uh, when we lived uh, at Ashley's parents' place. We rented a, a suite from them. Anyways, we I put a nail in the wall and then I put this on the nail and it just was there. It's a pretty cool little sculpture. Uh, I would make more of these, but uh, when I make stuff like this and I get a hundred thousand orders and then I'm just like, Ugh, I have to make a whole bunch of the same thing. I should make these more expensive. <laughs> so I'll get less orders. But uh, anyways, this one here could go for $1. What are we at now? $69 to Martha. Uh, we got 69 to buy here, 70, $70. And we got 60, oh, now we have 70. Do I hear $71? 71, 71, 71, 71, one minute left. 71, 71, 71, and we're at 69, do I hear 71? How do people put other words in there? Like, all I can think of to say is, like, the number we're on. Uh, uh, hey, boss, I knew you had a lot of cool stuff, but holy LL, just wanted to stop by and wish, wish you the best, and see you tomorrow. Oh, that's Mitch. Guys, say hello to Mitch. Mitch was just here. He's going to come tomorrow. We're going to hopefully finish up the rest of the boards. We probably won't quite finish all of them, but we'll try. Probably Saturday we will. That's when Ken's coming again. Uh, everyone's saying hello to Mitch. 72. We're at $72. Oh, I hear 73. <laughs> uh... Seventy-two high winner Hannah sold to Hannah for seventy-two dollars. Thank you, Hannah. This heart is yours. This will have no problem making it to you wherever you live on the planet. Please email me order from Josh at gmail.com with your mailing info and your phone number if you're outside of Canada. Oh, I dropped a rock. A little rock and roll. What next? You think tree? Okay, this. I get lots of questions about this, apparently, because it's in the background of videos. I used to sell stuff like this all of the time, and today we will sell again, starting at $1 uh, when Matthew says go. Um, so, me and my brother, Will, had a store, okay? And we would sell the stuff that we liked making, like, for example... The toe, I would love to sell there, or the eggs, or whatever, right? We would sell those and, and other stuff, like a bunch of stuff, some antique stuff. Not that we would intentionally sell antiques or anything, but when we got them, we're like, oh, we'll put this there. Uh, but, anyways, we would sell stuff like this because lots of people would buy these. So, we'd sell these for like 30 bucks or something like that. Super simple, but so like they're good for so many different types of uh, people's aesthetic, right? So if you have a rustic aesthetic, if you have a farmhouse, if you even have like a contemporary home, you have a little something like this on your gallery wall or something, you know, it just works. Um, so we did so many different kinds. So we had like where we'd burn the wood and then carve it in or where we burn in the tree and then some were framed, some were not. It's all dependent. And when we had a whole bunch, it looked a lot more attractive than just having one random one. But uh, yeah, so we would sell these all the time for like $20, $30, depending on if they had a frame or whatnot. But uh, yeah, so one thing that I sometimes would realize is like if I had a piece of poplar, I would still put a spruce tree. And I'm just like, why would I put a spruce tree on a piece of poplar? That's dumb. So this is a piece of spruce or pine with a spruce or pine tree on it. Uh framed in pine. Now this has been sitting in the shop for a long time. I believe, I don't even know why I made this exactly. Did I make this on Patreon? Because if I did, I should have put this in that Christmas giveaway on Patreon, but I didn't and I forgot. I don't know why I made this because this is not an old one. I don't remember. Um, poplar on a pine tree is a nice kind of irony, actually. <laughs> is it? I don't get it. Why?
Uh, don't laugh. At first glance, I thought it was a fish skeleton. <laughs> I mean, I can see it. It's just missing its head. Uh, yeah. We're at $79. Holy. Wow. Okay. Well, that's nice. We have 79 Do I hear 80 In the back, there's anyone with an $80 bid. We're at $79. Oh, we have 80 And now we have 80 Do we have 81 We have 80 81 Do we have 81 Do I hear 81 I don't get how people do this, but... On the office, where... Uh, Michael Scott goes, swing, bada, 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 swing. <laughs> yeah. Michael Scott, hilarious. Um, Martha is the winner, sold. It squeaks when you bang it. That's what she said. Uh, email me, order from Josh, gmail. Wait, is that the same Martha who got the egg? Wait, who got the egg? Well, there you go. There you go. Okay. Next. What should we do? How about this flower? We have this poppy. Look, it even turns. Oh, wait. It used to turn. Okay. Well, you can't turn it anymore, but you used to be able to. It's seizing up. Made out of a uh, piece of red tin. We will start the bidding at $1 when Matthew says go. So this is a uh, poppy thing. I made this for Remembrance Day. Um, we're, what the heck? I can't remember exactly. Oh, yes. We did a an art show, me and day one. Well, it was like a like a, a fair or whatever you call it at a like an expo center anyway for it, it went through remembrance day which funny story Dakota was with me he's running running and it like if you guys know my brother and if you watch his show you you know his personality okay you can just he's running right clop 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 down the freaking hall right it's just like concrete and like uh rubber mats so it, it you can hear like slapping and everything else is silent he's like <laughs> oh shit he says and it, the reason why he like stopped and was like i wish i could do his face but if you watch this channel you know what it is we're having the the moment of silence right and, and like they did say, whatever, it's 11-11, please remove your hat. Whatever they said, you know, whatever they say around, uh, around, around, around Remembrance Day, on Remembrance Day. And, uh, but he didn't hear it. And so he's running to get back to our booth. And then he gets embarrassed because everyone is quiet and there's like no music or nothing. It's just like very still. And then just... <laughs> Running down the hallway. Hilarious. Uh, he didn't mean any disrespect or anything by that. He just didn't realize what was happening. But I still remember that because that was funny. And people thought, what an ass. He wasn't embarrassed. Yeah, he was embarrassed. He was really embarrassed. Um, but anyways, this is why I made this. I wanted, to, I wanted to put this on our booth or whatever. And so that's what I had. The back is not stained like the rest of it. But this is made out of pine. Look, I, got, I made it lap joints. Uh, the the green on the back there is is a uh, a disc, a diamond disc for masonry, and then it's just a bolt on it that pokes through the back uh, on a piece of plywood, I imagine. Yeah, I think a uh, some birch plywood actually, that's what it looks like. But anyway, that's the story on this. Are you going to sign it? I will sign it for whoever buys it. You just. Let me know if you want me to sign it for you. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's that. Holy cow. We're at $145. <laughs> that is very generous. We're at $150 now. Uh, 
maybe the good I mean that was a good story to tell. I don't know. The the laughs are free, but uh, I appreciate you paying for them. $169. Holy cow. Um, I don't really know what else to say about this. Um, yeah, that, that's why I made it. So, uh, there you go. I, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I feel like the time is too long. How long have we been on? We've been on here for an hour. But we only have one, two, three, four, five, including this item left. One hundred and eighty-one dollars. No five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, six, including this one. Um, yeah, there we go. Now remember, guys, whatever is the final bid on Matthew's screen is who wins, and we have a winner, Martha. Again, sold. Did anyone get my squeaks when you bang it? Reference, because we were talking about Michael Scott. Sometimes I put references in videos and I, I'm like, I don't, not everyone comments when they get it, but I'm like, I'm always like super stoked when people see it. They're like, they're like, oh, I see what you did there at timestamp. No one saw the dog on the, in the closet mm -hmm. or no one said it anyway. I specifically filmed that the way that I filmed it so that I would be like, why is, why is Chena up in the closet? What vlog was that? Do you remember? I can't remember, but Chena was up in the closet. I thought like the Keaton viewers would, I thought, uh, what's her name? What's the girl who knows everything? Renee. I thought Renee would see it, but she didn't, or maybe she did. I don't know. Next, guys, we have the most dumbest sculpture I ever made. This took me hours to make, okay? Do you understand? This thing is going to cost a lot to ship, so I'll say that fair warning. This is going to cost a lot to ship. We'll start the bidding at $1, just like everything else when Matthew says go, but be aware. This weighs like four pounds. Yeah, but this is dumb. <laughs> These things are kind of cool. Uh, this is a chicken leg or turkey leg made out of solid steel. So I took a whole bunch of scrap and welded it together until I had a solid mass. This is, you could work out with this, okay? <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. And then I, I uh, rusted it so it would look like, you know, like a cooked turkey leg or a chicken leg. Uh, I love it. Stupid, but I love it. And it took me forever to make, but it's so awesome. Like this, this is like, this is something to put in like a showcase, you know, where you have like, if, if you have uh what do you call it? Your china yeah. Put it in your China cabinet with your fancy salt shakers. Or like if you have a trophy case, Put this in there. People are like, what did you win that for? Be like, oh, I was the winning bidder on the uh, dead goat auctions. Um, which big thank you to Matthew for hosting the dead goat auctions, uh, or he is the dead goat auction. Uh, thank you for helping me out. Thank you for helping my brother out and whoever else you do this with. Really appreciate Jackson, so you your help. You could defend yourself with this. You, this is a bludgeoning tool. You saw it the two vlogs ago or so. I had that mace. The mace was heavier than this, to be honest, but uh, or to be fair. But this would... Uh, you could knock someone out with this easily. Like... No. Hold on. I need something that's metal. It still did it. Even though it, even though, oh, look at that. I don't even know how that happens, but that's awesome. Um, okay, no, that doesn't work. You believe me, this is solid. I don't know why I'm like trying to prove it to you. It is solid. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't remember when I made this, but I made it a long time ago, and I do remember making it out of like some like sockets, some just random scrap metal bits, and uh, other random stuff, like just random whatever, and then also some galvanized because you can see that it the the zinc or whatever the heck galvanization is made out of. You can see the white coming out there. Winner. Oh, we have a winner. Sold to Sissy for $75. Thank you. Uh, I have no idea what I would sell this for, which is probably why I never made it for sale. $71 sounds good. Or $75 sounds good. Thank you very much, Missy. That was me. That was me. That was me. Bro, bro, relax. Stop, 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 stop. Good. Yeah, relax. That, that was me, I swear. Okay, next. What should we do next? Spe Speaking of, I'm going to let Henry out just so that we have uh, less uh, noise. Sheena, stop, 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 stop. Relax. Okay, we're back. Okay, since we had a heavy one, let's keep it heavy here. This here is a robot that I made. And once again, we will start the bidding off at $1. This is like a kill bot. You see how his arms are guns? They can move, sort of. This I actually had in Alex's store. His name is Gilbert. I had him for a hundred dollars. Uh, a belt fed gun here. Yeah, this is he heavy. This will be expensive to ship. Um, probably more expensive than the turkey leg because it's also bigger. Um, but I used to make, used to, I, I guess I still do because I haven't stopped on purpose or anything, but robots I just think are interesting. And this one is made with this piece of steel here it was given to me by, I sold these Fargo uh, doors in our store, me and uh, Will's store. And I got them for free from the guy on off of Kijiji, which is kind of like Craigslist if you don't know what Kijiji is. And uh, I became friends with him, even though I forget his name for some reason. He has a rat rod. Uh, well, he the, he was working on a Fargo as a rat rod. Now he has a new one that he's building. Anyway, like a year or so later, he gave me this piece, which was his high school. Um, he was in metal shop, he, and he had to turn this on the on the uh, on the mill or whatever. And uh, yeah, so it was like started up here. What? Anyways, I used that for the body. Welded that to a piece of uh, pipe, union, whatever, joint thing. And this is one of my first welding projects. I can tell because my welding is not good at all, but it holds together. Use some uh, connecting rods here for uh, his feet and then spark plugs and such for his arms. Or, well, one arm and the other one's different. Because there's two different guns, and then his head, I don't actually know what this is, some sort of uh, valve or something, I don't know. But it looked it looked head-like to me. And all of my robots I've made with, uh, wait, what's ferrous metal versus non-ferrous metal? So, non-ferrous, whatever. All the heads are aluminum or something that's unweldable uh, on all the robots that I've made so far. Oh, actually, no, that's a lie, because the one that looks like the Iron Giant, he has a steel head. I forgot about that. But he has an aluminum jetpack, so maybe that's why I justified it. I don't know. And I also, I don't understand why I even cared about making, just because I made one robot with with a aluminum head, which was a sprinkler, and his name was Sprink. 
And this guy's name is Gilbert, which I would have never remembered. But anyway, I like making robots. So I had big ones, and then I had little ones, which I called obliterators. I can't remember what I called these big ones, but anyways. Winner is Penny for $62 sold. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Uh, yeah, I didn't really know what else to say about this, so. Perfect amount of jargon. Let's put this back here. Guys, we're almost done. Thank you very much, everyone who has who has joined and, and bidded or bid. Bidded? Bid. Yeah. Next, we will do, we've done some metal. Let's go back to wood here. Okay. Here we have, I love this thing. Bidding starting at $1 once again. But this thing, I would sell for like 500 bucks. I don't know if it's worth 500 bucks, but I freaking love this and it took me forever. And I've made several of these in metal and wood before, but that's cool. Okay. Property of blank, handmade by Joshua Alexander using reclaimed and upcycled materials. 2017, I made this. Wow. Okay, so this is a shadow box of a homo sapine hand. Yeah, Ashley did help me make this. I made this for an art show, I guess, in 2017 called Purgatorium. That means my brother did, and this other girl who turns out to be trash. Nah, she's not trash. She was just uh, not a nice human, uh, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, anyway. This is, uh, this is a hand. It's kind of like a pun, because Homo sapien is spelled almost the same as homo sapine you just move where the e is and so homo sapine he's made out of pine his hand and it says right homo sapine hand full i tried to make it look like what you would see in like a museum of like paleontology is it what would it be paleontology no that would be animals archaeology anthropology. anthropology anthropology there we go Homo sapine, a bipedal primate with coniferous bones consisting of pinodi, pinus, found scattered, oh, scattered is spelled wrong. There's the Easter egg in there. Throughout North America and Northern Europe, Northern Hemisphere 66 degrees north to as far south as 12 degrees north. One specimen found in the Southern Hemisphere, two degrees south. This specimen was produced from Atchison, Alberta. So that's where I was living at the time. Phalanges, carpals, and metacarpals are nearly identical to modern human hands in functionality. Homo sapiens bones have a more jagged consistency than their closest counterpart, Homo sapien, modern human. So this is awesome. Oh, also you can open it because it's just uh, magnets. I don't know why I made it so you can open it. That doesn't actually even make sense because there's no functional reason why you would want to open it. But anyway, I freaking love this thing. And whoever wins this, I hope that you really like it too. Um, yeah, I had this in the studio for a long time. I wasn't sure what to do with it. I was like, you know what? Let's put it in the auction. So here we are. And that's all I can really tell you about it. I will probably make more. I even thought of doing like making, oh yeah, foot. But that would be a lot more in, into it. But now that I have uh, Vincent, I could do it. Because okay. when I had this, I just literally looked at pictures of skeleton hands. Um, but I actually had thought about making puzzles where you just get a bag of these pieces and then you make the hand and you would glue it to whatever. But uh, I never actually ended up doing that because these take a long time to make in case you uh, are unaware. They take a really long time to make. Um, and this one I didn't make super, like I, I kept it jagged, mostly out of laziness, but uh, I actually like it like that rather than making it really smooth. So I really like this one. What are we at here? $121, wow, <laughs> thank you so much. Bago Bones, oh, that's such a good title. Or uh, wait, wait, title? 
such a good name for the for uh, um, whatever you call it for the bag of bones. Bag of bones. That's great. Um, yeah. So maybe I will do that one. One. I'll probably do a limited. I'll do make like ten of them or something. And I'll probably make them as giveaways because I don't think I would sell them, be able to sell them for what I would want to sell them for. Oh, we have a winner. Okay, winner is. I don't see you, winner. Oh, uh, sold to Martha for $121. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Martha is. Martha is a big collector of mine, and I think Dakota's too. Okay, we have two things left. Okay, we have metal and wood, or we have just metal. Okay, we'll save the best for last. Okay, we are going to do this rifle made out of reclaimed wood. And uh, funny story. Actually, I'm not going to tell that story. <laughs> I, it is funny, but I feel like people will be offended if I say it because they just will. So I can't do it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's changing the stuff. She's like, what kind of wood is that? <laughs> like she cares. <laughs> so this is uh, a toy that I made, uh, again, for our store that Chakota and I had. I got this from one of my clients who told me a story that I think is funny, but I'm not going to say it, just in case. Uh, and then the piece of wood is just a piece of off-cut for all the way from one of my framing jobs or whatever. Uh, probably a two by eight or something like that. I don't know. And uh, yeah, this is probably my first gun or maybe my third gun or second gun. I mean, I also made a, a musket and a blunderbuss. Uh, but this one, I never put triggers in them because I don't want anyone to pretend that this is a real gun or accuse me of showing guns on YouTube or anything like that or whatever. So, um, yeah, it doesn't have a, a hammer on it either. Um, I actually made this as a rubber band gun. There used to be a clothespin on here, but that came off. And, uh, yeah, I can't remember how I had it. Did I put it all the way here? I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, this... Kind of cool. Uh, I hope that this doesn't get stopped at customs or whatever. I mean, it's a toy. If we say like rubber band toy gun or something. Well, I'll make it prop toy gun or something. Yeah. Toy gun, non-firing toy gun. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, look at the barrel. I mean, that would like banana peel but uh, look how thick that is. Imagine the slug in there. But yeah, this piece I got from a client and then uh, he hired me to do some more stuff and then I didn't go and then he got mad at me. I told him that I couldn't just yet because I was too busy and he said, oh, okay, well, when you're not busy. And so I texted him back two weeks later and he said, I already got it done. And I said, okay, and he was mad. Yeah, he gave me, he was a pilot for the Canadian Air Force. Mm. And he did like Yeah, I did. I drywall or I taped his bathroom downstairs. So expensive. I was like, you know, this would be way better if you got me to do the whole basement. And he's like, nah, just the bathroom. And I was like, dude, this could be like 1500 bucks, but I could do your whole basement for like $5,000. And he's like, no, nah, that's okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, uh, story to the winner? <laughs> no, I can't do it. I don't know who the winner is going to be, and uh, I don't want them to be like, guess what Josh said? It's not my story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> has to do with the old prime minister, the prime minister that we have now, his dad. 
I'm just making it more intriguing, and I'm still not going to tell you. So I don't know why I thought that would alleviate it. I'm just making it more annoying that I'm not telling you. But anyway, um, this is. Uh, I made this probably in like 2017 or 2018, 2016. Yeah, it's old. Yeah. Old. Had it for a while. This was just sitting in the uh, in the shop, like I it was in where the dowels are in that garbage can. It was just in there, and I was like, oh. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even have it on the wall or anything. Winner sold for eighty five dollars to Lori. Thank you, Lori. Pierre Trudeau and the vacuum tube. Hmm. Dr. Steve? Dr. C. Dr. C. Who said this? Martha. How do you know who Dr. C is? Dr. C, where are you? Lori, thank you. Please email order from joshagmail.com with your mailing info. Okay. We are on the last, the last item. Okay, thank you so much to everyone who has uh, participated. Very, very kind of you guys to be so generous. This is the last item, okay? I have to tell you that I would sell this probably for 700 bucks. This took me a while to make. I made a video about it. I was thinking about making other cars for it, but I never did. Um, I love this thing. Made out of scrap metal. Starting the bids at $1 when Matthew says go. Oh, what the heck? I forgot. I Look at that whistle, guys. That's worth 20 bucks right there. Look at that. <laughs> Steam whistle. Are you kidding me? Of course, it has the, the light. And uh, this here is what I think inspired the whole build. I was like, oh, that looks like the front of a train. The Orange Blossom Special. Oh yeah, and it rolls. These things don't, but whatever. And this part doesn't turn. It's it's more or less static, but it does roll some. One thing that I hate is the cow basher is a little crooked. It is very heavy. Shipping will be quite high on this. The bell, piece of brass hose fitting. This might pop off because this is cast. Cast does not weld very well. I'm going to tape this. I hope it doesn't come off. If this doesn't survive, I'm not going to refund you. No, I will. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Why don't I tell you what all this is? Okay, so the back here is just a piece of square tube. This here is a piece of... Oh, I can't remember what these are from. Stop, 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 stop. I can't remember what these are. Uh, this is a, just a piece of pipe for the, the reservoir or whatever you'd call that. And then we just got some metal fittings here. I forget what these are, but they're from a bearing or something. I can't remember. And then just a piece of, oh, that's a rivet. There, this is a piece of hose fitting. This is a socket. This is a socket. This is a nut with a washer connected to it. Uh, this, I think, is a thermostat off of uh, some sort, probably a, probably, I want to say, off of a semi-truck, but I can't remember, or a semi-truck. It has a QR code on it. That's weird. Uh, and then the wheels are, these are garage door like you know like to roll in the track these are from the garage door and then these are bearings here and then this is uh from a harrow's i think yeah i just took off the serrated edge and cut in some whatchamacallits i don't get why this is doing this this is so annoying there we go we are at 
$250. Do I hear 251? 251, 251, 251. We're at 250. In the back, do I hear 251? Do I hear 251? You're right there, 251. We are at 252. Thank you. So we skipped 251. Appreciate that. But I. <laughs> um, this is not modeled off of any train in particular or any locomotive engine or whatever. I just kind of made up in my head. Ooh, and this that the wheels are on. I actually don't know what that is. I'm trying to remember. Oh, that looks like a big rocker. I think that's a rocker. I think. Because I think the lifter would... I don't know. I think it's a rocker, but I'm not sure. Um, yeah. One of my cooler... Sculptures. Oh, we have a winner. Winner, Joe Ho Ho, 275, sold. And that's the auction, folks. Um, oh, yeah. And this piece of, this is a piece of cast iron from something. I don't know. Cast iron's hard to weld. It's, it's, it's unweldable. But, I mean, I welded on here. It already broke off once. But I got it to stay on. And then the door. has a little door. Yeah. I think this is the best item. What is this the most expensive? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Good. We saved it for last. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Joe Ho Ho, please email me order from Josh at gmail.com with your mailing information and your uh, uh, phone number if you're outside of Canada. Big thank you. To everyone here who has participated, who bidded, bidded, bid, bade. I guess it's bid. I really appreciate that. And also, thank you to Matthew for doing this because it makes things way easier. He has experience in doing this, so I appreciate him offering. Uh, Guys, go check out Matthew. Matthew, if you don't mind putting in your links, don't be bashful. Put in all your links. If you guys would go follow him on his socials and his YouTube channel. I think he's trying to get to a 1,000 YouTube subscribers so that he can go live on YouTube because he does his, uh, his jewelry auctions on there, which he does by himself. Uh, he doesn't have someone who does what he's doing for me. Uh, but anyways... He's a big help to the channel in more ways than you might see through moderation and all that stuff. He's uh, a great guy. Um, if anyone was confused as to what the heck we were doing, well, uh, we decided, Matthew was like, bro, we should do this auction thing. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Uh, we've been talking about it for a long time. But I was like, how many months ago was he like, you should do this? And then I was like, oh, yeah, I probably have some stuff. And then I didn't even start looking until... Whenever I put up the Instagram post, I just went and found some stuff. And then we put it out, and then I still didn't think about it for a long time. And then here we are. And thank you. Matthew's putting up his links. He's got his Instagram. Oh, put on your YouTube one too. And maybe even your band. Right now he's working on his uh his uh new studio album with his band. Uh Machines That Kill Babies, or whatever his band is called. Penalizing the Machine. It doesn't have to do with babies. It's like Machines of Death or something. Machines of Penalty. Yes. Uh, okay, my English isn't Englishing. Was tired, went to bed, then back up to catch the last of the auction. Fun to watch. Congrats to the buyers for your unique, unique pieces. Thank you. Uh, designer Window Fashions. Wait, do you sell windows? Do you sell the windows that, that like? Fashion, color oh, the fashion, the clothes for the window. Do you, hey, do you make blinds, the blinds that are hidden, that come down? We need those. I don't want curtains. Curtains are so ugly. Ashley wants curtains because she likes ugly stuff, but. <laughs> I want the blinds because then there, there's nothing like the kind that you can't see. Like they're just in that thing, and it kind of looks like it's just part of the, like the window casing or whatever. I want those kind of blinds. Anyways, 
<clears throat> yeah, okay, guys. What do you think about this? I was thinking, okay, first I thought, okay, polka dots. Some curtains have polka dots, and that's fine if you like polka dots. And I have nothing against polka dots, but I want it to look like polka dots from a distance. But when you go in, zoom in with your eyeballs, wait, those aren't polka dots, those are skulls. Huh, cool. I thought that would be so cool. I also, I also thought pineapples, but then I didn't want, I didn't realize at the time that that's like a swinger thing to have pineapples. <laughs> and <laughs> not that anyone would be able to see that they're pineapples. That would be the point that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to tell exactly what the polka dots are until you're up close. I just think that's so fun or even better Lego heads, Lego heads or like, uh, I don't know, whatever else is roughly round. <laughs> I have nothing against polka dots, LOL. <laughs> I don't know why I defended myself <laughs> there. I don't have anything against polka dots, but now it sounds like I definitely do, and I just don't want anyone to be unsubscribe. He doesn't like dots. <laughs> you got something against circles? Laid out in a pattern, do you? <laughs> uh, Space Invaders, yeah, that would be another good thing to put in there. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, that's it. Well, she married you, LOL. Yeah, we met at a swinging convention. Lots of playground equipment there but we were there for the for the swings <laughs> that was so dumb that was, that was barely a joke that was like an anti-joke um <laughs> okay um i guess that's it hey josh how did you meet alex okay this is it we're gonna close the auction with how i met alex because believe it or not i met him not at an auction, but an auction-esque, a place where they sell things by calling out. Have you guys heard of, what's that place in Seattle, Pike's Market? Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you guys heard of Pike's Market? There's, <laughs> there's a fish market in Seattle right off the ocean there. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna grab some water. Oh, you guys can still hear me because I have this microphone on. Anyway, so we have, we went on a vacation, if you will, with Ashley's parents years ago. Probably like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that. And uh, yeah, because I was like 17 or 18 or something like that. Anyway, they had uh, the ship, the Canadian warship was docked there at the time and uh they were like you know further down the way right and so we we're walking along like the boardwalk or whatever you'd call it anyway we see the warship so we start walking that way and i was like oh that's cool whatever you know and then it was it had like a Canada flag on it. It was like the SS Canada. I don't remember what it was called. But anyways, thought it was cool. We checked it out. And we're standing there at the railing or whatever. And they didn't let anyone see it. It was actually going to be the next week, I think, they were going to allow people to like come aboard and like have tours or whatever. And uh, I don't know why. Maybe I'm pretty sure our military equipment is not nearly as sophisticated as American stuff. So maybe like the draw was like, oh, check out these antiques that Canada has. <laughs> they have docked up in Seattle. Anyway, we were shouting at them. We were like, we're Canadian. So maybe they would let us on because like I've never been on a warship before. And so we're like, we're Canadian. Well, mostly it was me saying this. And then some dude down the way. He's like, I'm Canadian too. And he like looks over his shoulder and is laughing. And I'm like, he's Canadian. We're Canadian. Let us on. And that dude was just, he just kept walking. He was just making fun of me, I guess. 
Anyways, he was walking down that way, and then uh, we were also walking that way, and we stopped at the worship, and Pike's Market was down there. Anyway, but at the time, we didn't know. Hey, we're looking at the ship, blah, blah, blah. Ship gets boring because we're not allowed on, so we go by. We go that way. I was like, we should, we should go there because for some reason, there was some dude throwing all of these fish, like little sardine fish, like they were like this big. He was just like throwing them, and I don't even know if there's, oh, what's a mackerel? Is a mackerel a type of fish? Oh, they were mackerel. How big are mackerel? They're huge? Well, then what was the fish that he had? Okay. He, okay. This is why I think they were mackerel. What? How big is a mackerel fish? Hold on. I got to look this up. How big? What the heck is this? Okay, how do I get on the interwebs on this thing? Internet. Mackerel. Because, guys, as we got closer to this guy throwing all these fish on the ground, mackerel, he had a, he was a vendor at, at the market. Mackerel. How big? Yeah, that's what they look like. That's not big. Is that big? I bet you they were mackerel fish, but they were only like this big. Hold on, mackerel fish size. Anyways, he had a... No, that's huge. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I've never looked this up. Okay, these mackerel, they're like this big. Okay, they were not mackerel then. They couldn't have been because they were only this big. Or maybe he was fishing for mackerel. Okay, well, he was throwing these fish onto the like this tarp thing. And okay, but this mackerel's small. Okay, I don't know, guys. Whatever, it doesn't matter. His his van thing said holy mackerel on it, so that's 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 what made me think, oh, maybe it was a mackerel. Hey, stop. Stop. Chill. Chill. Okay, let me go back to YouTube here. Um, okay, anyways. Doesn't matter. He has nothing to do with anything. He just, he was there, and which made me want to walk over that way. Okay, he was throwing all these like fish on the ground or on the, well, on the tarp thing. And he's like spreading them out until it like covered the whole thing. I don't know what he was doing, but we were watching him for a while. And uh, um, anyway, we go into Pike's Market. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's kind of like a maze, sort of in a sense. Not a maze, but like uh, there's lots of like areas to go like you go upstairs and stuff i remember this one guy had hot wheels and stuff in his booth i don't know if it was a booth it's more like a room but everyone had like little stores right and uh he they, he had hot wheels in there and i was trying to find a fox body mustang because i have a fox body mustang um but i he didn't he didn't have one but that, again that's besides the point anyway we're walking around and then in the, one of the bigger areas, you hear like yelling. You hear like, I don't even know what they were yelling. Do you remember what they were yelling? They're just like, big fish up. And then they would throw a fish and then someone else would catch it. And then they'd wrap it up and then they'd throw it to the person who bought it. Okay. And it, it's kind of cool. We tried to take pictures of it. You remember this? Yeah, in the paper. Really? Yeah, so it wasn't slippery. Yeah. Didn't your dad buy some? No, I think so. We just said that I watched them. Yeah, we did watch them. But anyway, the guy from earlier who was, <laughs> I'm Canadian too, was there. And guess who that guy was? It was Alex. And guess how I got to know him? When they were throwing the fish, uh, he was walking, and it just went whoosh, right in front of his face. And then the, the person who got it fumbled it 
And then I happened to catch the fish. And then that guy, Alex, said, oh, it's the Canadian. Good catch. And then we went to that crab shack or whatever. Gross. Luckily, they had beef burgers. But everyone else had crab and, like, the they, like, pour it on your table with the paper. And there we go. That's how I met Alex. We had dinner with Alex because he recognized the other Canadians when he almost got slapped in the face with a fish. <sighs> you rival the stories that 21 pilots tell how they met. Do they have good stories? Wait, because people probably ask if they're brothers. Are they brothers? Did you get on the boat ship? No, we never got on it. Because it they weren't having like the tours or whatever till like the next week or something. And we were leaving, I think, the next day, I think. Yep, good stories. Nope, not brothers. But I think people think they're brothers, right? Is that how that started? The mackerel were jumping onto the tarp? Okay, so those of you who are new, this story was completely made up. That's why they asked me to ask how I, or to tell how I met Alex. Um, elements of the story are true, but <laughs> almost nothing in this story was true, except for the fact that we did go to Pike's Market. They did throw the fish. There was a warship, and we did go to the crab shack for dinner. Uh, I don't know where the mackerel slash sardine fish on the tarp came from. I just wanted to, I don't know, embellish my adventures a little bit. I don't even think that's a thing. Do people do that? Holy mackerel. <laughs> Someone in the comments said, uh, holy mackerel. And I was like, they know what I'm going to say. Anyway, uh, the mackerel were jumping. Oh, I already read that. And he looks serious. Herrings are not that big. Maybe they were babies. How do you come up with these on the spot? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes they're not so good. Sometimes they're pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why did you whisper that? Why did you whisper that? Not your story. Oh, but, so but when you do this, it still interrupts me. <laughs> um, Pike Place Market, not Pike's. Oh, Pike Place. Okay, okay. Well, whatever. That's how you know that the story is true because I kind of forgot what it was called. <laughs> um, okay, that's it, guys. That's how we're going to end it. I've seen about 50 different stories on how he met Alex. Yeah, I don't know how many stories there were, but uh, my favorite is the car accident story. Pff, I don't even remember that one. <laughs> I remember the first one, I think. I don't even know why I lied the first time. Like, again, just for anyone, I know there was some people in the past who got really offended by the, me lying about how I met Alex. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to... to understand that I'm joking, but yes, it was a lie, but it was for fun. And I told you after that it was made up. I will never lie about anything on purpose to deceive you for anything more than jokes, just for fun, just to get a kick. Not, I don't, yeah. Anyway, I feel like I need to say that just because some people, you know, this wasn't true. No, it wasn't true. Why, were you hoping it was true? mine is the elephant on the movie set oh that was a good one that was one of the best stories I ever told because even Clint believed me and I was like you believe that and he was like yeah why wouldn't I I was like dude I didn't work at the zoo and you're not gonna allow a 15 year old to work with tigers dummy like what uh, uh, I hope you like the stories I will always tell some iteration of how I met Alex when people ask if I see it. Oh, you think you're going to go after this cat? I don't think so. 
Um, anyway, uh, Alex told the car accident. Oh, okay. Well, I missed that. I don't think I, I, I heard him say that, but that's hilarious that he does it too. Josh always confesses to his lies, but he will keep telling them. It's entertaining. Yeah. If I can convince you that it's true, like, I'm glad. Like, sometimes you'll see that I start laughing. Like, I covered it up by drinking this time. <laughs> but, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, I can't do it. And I'm, like, trying to not smile. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's easier to tell the stories if I if there's truth to them. And I'll just insert Alex in there somewhere. But the first one was, like, the fishing... The fishing boat, deadliest catch, saved my life. And then I remember another one where I fell into the pool with all that welding hoses and stuff getting tangled up in me. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, I fell for the one where Alex was speaking at your school and making you sit on the stage. <laughs> oh, you know how I came up with that one? Huh? Yeah, I can't remember. I mean, it was a little absurd, though, right? I can't remember what it was exactly, but I remember it was a little absurd. It was like, I was like, why would that happen? But I got that part of that story was inspired by Burt Kreischer. If you guys don't know who Burt Kreischer is, he's a comedian. And he told a story. You guys should look it up, okay? There's lots of coarse language, so if that's not something you're into then maybe skip it, but go Burt Kreischer tells story about basketball camp or something like that. Uh, I don't even know how, how you get it. But anyways, I heard that story, made me laugh. And somehow that I, I remembered that while I was telling them. Yeah. I don't even remember what I said in the, in that story. But anyways, if we get in how I met Alex book in that coffee table or bathroom reading, is that coffee table or bathroom reading? I think that would be a bathroom reading book because it'll be short stories. So, you know, we should, we should do that. Hey, don't, don't, this cat can be here. <laughs> don't knock anything off, Penny. Henry loves chasing the cats. He doesn't hurt them. But they get very annoyed. Anyways, okay, you're not lying. You're just joshing. Zing. I like that. Okay, that's it, guys. Sorry I kept you long. But just a quick recap on how you claim your items. If you have bid, you want it. Or, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to end this with some confusion. If you were the winning bid as announced by Matthew, you won. <laughs> <laughs> so we are expecting your email please email orderfromjosh at gmail.com tell us which item you won Ashley has it written down Matthew probably has it written down uh, uh, depending on what item you won shipping will differ if you won multiple things like, like Martha well we'll pack it up so that things don't get wrecked and all that stuff. But it kind of depends on like where you live, what the cost of shipping is. So uh, I can't tell you what shipping will be, but that's on top of whatever your bid is. How do you pay? Ashley will take payment through the email. Uh, you can do PayPal, you can do credit card, you can do debit, you can do e-transfer if you're in Canada, you can do... Yeah, Ashley will email invoice you and then you can pay that however you do. However you'd normally buy something. If you've never bought anything, then I guess you wouldn't know. But anyway, that's how we do it. Um, I am confusion. Uh, I, wish, I wish I could see Ashley's face. I don't know why that made her laugh so hard, but it did. Uh, uh, I, if I wish I could have something, do I win? Not quite. <laughs> um yeah, that's it. Matthew, before we close, please put your links again and we'll close on that. You can do loonies and toonies. <laughs> I think I mentioned loonies and toonies in the next vlog. If you guys don't know what that is. It sounds dumb, right? Yeah, I never think about that. 
It's like, what kind of money do you have? Oh, loonies and toonies, eh? Okay, guys, good night. There's Matthew's uh, link. Please support Matthew because he does a lot for us. He's, uh, he's got uh, a few to go to get to 1,000 subs here on, uh, on uh, YouTube. And then he can go live on YouTube. And then he can monetize. And that would be awesome. So help him out. Thank you for what you do, Matthew. And uh, thank you for everyone else. Who is your grandpa's favorite comedian? Oh, he can't remember. Really? Yeah, he can't remember. He still doesn't know. That would be good. Okay, guys, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have these things sent out to you on Monday, unless you haven't paid yet. Um, all right. All right. <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Thank you, Alex. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Matthew. And Alex, I guess. And everybody else. That was dumb.